Well, you're looking at the North Atlantic, Greenland straight at the top, Nova Scotia off to the left. You see those two very well-defined spherical uh, systems. They are spinning counterclockwise. There's one at the very top of the screen came from the east and came backwards against the grain and is now pushing its way up uh, into north of the Hudson Bay. Anything that looks like a jet stream is uh, traveling in the wrong direction. And there's actually other low pressure systems that are not so well visible because they don't have as much water in them, which I, I never thought that it was possible to have low pressure without water. But we're seeing these systems that all look like they've been created from the same machines. Uh, the, the eye of these storms are roughly the same diameter their scope of influence is roughly the same these things can reach down from uh, Canada and grab moisture from the northern equatorial belt all of them can and when you butt them up against one another it creates a series and a system that is chaotic but consistent and this is actually goes against what we've been seeing normal for the last two months and I use that word loosely normal uh, we're seeing uh, low pressures dropping from the north we see low pressures coming from the east and then we see this big low pressure a double low pressure system and there we it's not uncommon to see two of them come out of Canada like this and but basically they they just took the jet stream and demolished it and the, most of the rivers of moisture on planet Earth nowadays are running north to south or south to north. We go over to Alaska. Um, this is cloud top IR to show you that there's actually three systems here. but And there's one off to the right. You cannot see it. It's just a dot. Um, we went with something that could visualize more particulates. And now that storm shows up there. On the right hand side of the screen and this bizarre pulsing that comes in around cloud top layers um, but not up at high layers I don't know why that satellite doesn't pick this anomaly up but you can see uh, off the coast of Vancouver and headed down towards Portland is that fast spinning system and usually when a system like this with a lot of rotation with a lot of low pressure uh, usually they bring moisture they don't destroy it but you get a dry low pressure system and it will destroy your moisture especially on the back side or the nine o'clock position on a, on a dial uh, those that position kind of acts like a weed eater to all moisture coming in behind it it just has a way of um, mowing down this moisture and getting rid of it so when they park one over California and they sail it down the coast they traverse the coast when when that backside is just off the coast it has the effect of just taking any and all moisture that's trying to get to the coast and and making it disappear this um, anomaly showed up I don't know if you can see it we're, we're going to uh, zoom in here just a second. Uh, it looks like bullets being fired out of a gun straight center. You can see, I mean, already the moisture is traveling at incredible speed. But you see these pulses, it, you know, it looks like dots. And on the ground, there's even dark or lower, there's even darker image 
to kind of mirror the white image of all these specks that are flying by at an incredible speed. These, these things are flying faster than any jetliner, uh, those little dots. And this system here that's over Baja, uh, it's, an, it's an, again one of those dry systems. It's not bringing up much water except off to the right of the screen. There's a whole river of water it's, um, it's uh, doing. But then you go due north up the coastline, you see almost a similar pattern, a similar storm. It's just come in contact with a little more moisture. So it's a little bit easier to see. But when you put it on low level moisture, uh, it disappears. You can't see it. They're invisible ghost storms. And you can see the back side of this storm, that back side, uh, is mowing down all moisture. We go back down to that uh, system over Baja, and we go to low cloud top moisture, and look, you, you can't even see it. And then Hawaii, off to the left, there's one that just kicked up over Hawaii that's starting to hook back around, and that's shooting water north and east which that down there the water should be always a stream a river traveling right to left uh, mimicking the equator mirroring the equator and it's been gone we have not had a pacific um, mid equatorial belt of moisture for three months now four months that's uh south america right there brazil again gets pummeled by thunderstorms but that equatorial belt of water off to the right over the Atlantic, you can see, is not traveling from right to left. And it, it, there's a lot of evaporation over that Atlantic, the equatorial belt, and, and it's producing a lot of evaporation. But it's just being grabbed and taken up to Spain, Europe area. And again, moisture running south to north amazing amazing and again the Caribbean and the Gulf don't have a cloud over them because all that moisture was getting stolen so we're gonna go up north we're just jumping around here uh, Gulf of Alaska we're gonna take a closer look at the, those systems again off to the right the ghost system and those two big, you know, the, we're getting a lot of double systems coming in and leaving the United States. But again, I have to impose upon you that these invisible systems are consistently preventing water from getting into the United States, especially California. And there's a big void over the Pacific. This is the Pacific Ocean, Hawaii off to the lower left. Baja up to the right um, and right over Baja there's that system and you could see pulling up a huge amount of water from the northern equatorial belt and throwing it across Mexico and, and up into Texas and and so forth but that moisture never seems to make it back around uh, in these spiral systems but they just all start to look alike after a while um, when I go to cloud top, it disappeared. Look at it, it's gone. These are ghost systems, and you you um, you get them through ionosphere heaters that create wicked updraft, and then that creates rotation. Wicked wicked updraft and low pressure, also drawing moisture up from the six o'clock position of the storm, but it, but the nine o'clock position uh, gets drawn. Uh, gets dry, dried out completely. Uh, so that that system, a ghost system, is affecting, you know, one quarter of the Pacific. Uh, and and that water off to the right hand screen, that's a huge amount of water being pulled up. So if you wanted to park that over some place as a as a weapon of war, uh, you could definitely create floods if you could steer those those eyes of those storms but the one in Hawaii you can just see that the water looks like it's been shooting out of a fire hydrant and for the first time 
uh, Mexico there, the Gulf of Mexico, actually had clouds over it because these things were drawing a stream right over the Gulf of Mexico. I wonder if that was an accident. But again, you see double systems. They're all lining up back to back and then back to back. And they're, they've totally messed up the jet stream. There's no jet stream anymore. And they want to call stuff going south and north a jet stream. The, the largest of those vortexes, a little bit larger than the rest, um, again, very, very well-defined eye of those systems. It almost look like a hurricane, but those are upper level. Now, we put out a notice, and somebody wrote an article about our notice. We, we were talking about the Jupiter-Sun-Earth alignment. It's actually Jupiter and Saturn, but... Saturn doesn't have much of a role in seismicity. It's too far away. Um, but we said increased earthquakes, and we said an increase in solar flares. So the sun during the alignment has been pretty active for having just a handful of sunspots. And uh, they were right on cue, right on time. Uh, we did not predict so much the comets hitting the sun but heck how many times have we made videos saying this is a great time to go out and look at falling stars there's so much debris and we've been covering how many comets not just asteroids but comets themselves are just there's it's a tenfold increase in what we're used to seeing um, easily a tenfold increase that's a conservative estimate but again, you're looking at the sun uh, reacting to the Earth-Sun-Jupiter alignment. Why do alignments cause solar flares? And we think it has to do with resonance. We really do. Uh, there might be something going on with the magnetic field when you, you make a connection and then break it. But again, that, uh, that affects resonance as well. The earthquake situation we're seeing... Um, and slight increase, the blues and the reds are new quakes. Um, again, S Southern Cal along the San Andreas is, and the basins are always active. But look at the bottom of the screen here. That's a long valley caldera. And look at that nice spherical shape to these earthquakes. That is unusual, and it could mean something. It could actually mean something could be a central collapse of the dome or a central uplift. Um, and then, of course, we, we were predicting larger quakes uh, between 6 and 7. And this is a 7-pointer. Uh, it just happened a day or two ago in a trench off of the Philippines. But we've also seen 6-pointers in South America. And so this is behaving pretty much like we specifically laid it all out. The thing that we're not quite seeing yet and it's it's amazing me because all of our large body alignments used to do this but now as this brown dwarf moves away from the solar system things are going to become less reactive but uh mid-atlantic ridge is kind of quiet quieter than we thought it would be